Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's take a look at a few advanced types when passing props to a component. For our first type, let's consider a status component. In the components folder, I have status.tsx. For the JSX, we have three h2 tags, loading, data fetched successfully, and error fetching data. Our work here is to conditionally render only one of these statuses depending on a prop passed in. Let's assume the prop is status and can either be loading, success or error. Let's begin by defining the prop type at the top. Type status props, one property called status of type string. Now on the status component, we can specify props of type status props. We can also restructure the JSX to be let message if props.status is loading, message is equal to loading. Similarly, else if props.status is equal to success, message is equal to data fetched successfully. Else if props.status is equal to error, message is equal to error fetching data. And the JSX can be one h2 tag that renders the message. In app component, we can import and invoke the status component. If no prop is specified, we get an error that status is missing. So let's add it in. Status is equal to loading. And now the error is gone. We can also set status is equal to success or error. Now this works fine, but we do have a problem. Our message can handle only a status of loading, success or error. The status type though is any string. So we could pass in a completely random string and TypeScript doesn't flag it as an error. To fix this, we can use a union of string literals as the status type. So status is going to be either loading or success or error. Now, if you go back to the app component, you can see we have an error. Type ASD ASD is not assignable to type loading or success or error. This, as you can see, is very useful. All right, for our next type, let's take a look at the children props which can be passed to a React component. For this example, I have two files we can work with. Let's first take a look at heading.tsx. The component renders a placeholder text as you can see. What we want to do is invoke this heading component by passing in some text between the opening and closing tags. So in app.tsx, heading, and in between the tags, placeholder text. When we do this though, we see an error. Type children of string has no properties in common with type intrinsic attributes. Luckily for us, we see the solution right here. Let's go back to the heading component and add the children prop type. So type heading props is going to have one prop called children of type string. And within parentheses, props of type heading props and the text is going to be props.children. If we go back to app.tsx, our error is gone. Now another variant of children props is when the child is another React component. If we head over to oscar.tsx, 
we see a heading that says Oscar goes to DiCaprio. Instead of using the text, we want to use the heading component, but that should be as children props. Kind of a contrived scenario, but it serves the purpose. So in app.tsx, import and invoke the Oscar component. So Oscar, and in between the opening and closing tags, we want to be able to pass the heading component. So heading, and the text is Oscar goes to DiCaprio. When we do this, we get an error. So let's go back to Oscar.tsx and fix this. And the question is, what is the type of a React component? There are a few types you can specify, but the safest bet is react.reactNode, which is a type provided by the React Types package. So at the top, type Oscar props. We specify one property called children, which is set to react.reactNode. Now, if you're using React version 16, make sure to import React at the top. I am using React version 17 and we don't have a necessity to import React in each file. This type, by the way, is from the at types slash React package. And now that we have the props type, we can specify props of type Oscar props and within the div tag, props.children. If we go back to app.tsx, you can see that we have fixed the type error. Now passing React components as children props is pretty common, so make sure you remember about the React node type from the React types package. All right, the last type I want to discuss in this video is the optional type. Sometimes it might so happen that a component prop doesn't have to be passed. And for this example, Let's revisit the greet component. In app.tsx, I'm going to import and invoke the greet component once again. We specify the name prop is equal to Vishwas and message count is equal to 10. We can also set is logged in is equal to false. Let's say there are no messages or zero messages and we don't want to pass in the message count prop. If I remove it, TypeScript throws an error that we are missing the prop. Property message count is missing in type greet props. The way we inform TypeScript that message count prop is optional is by including a question mark at the end of the prop name where we define the type. So in greet.tsx, message count, question mark, colon. And when we do that, our error in app.tsx is fixed. And if you want to go a step further, you can destructure message count from props and assign a default value of zero. So const message count is equal to zero from props. So what we are saying is if message count is passed in, use that value. If not, use zero as its value. This is how you specify optional props for a component with TypeScript. So these are some common advanced types you'll need when defining props for a component. A union of string literals, children prop, children prop where the type is react.reactNode and finally optional props. Make sure to keep them all in mind. In the next video, let's take a look at passing events as props to a component with TypeScript. If you're enjoying the videos, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.